So, good morning. Um, it's early in the morning here, quite cold. Um, decided to start my video way of saving the end of the one, last one last time with, with a big cheesy grin and my books. Oops, sorry. <laughs> my books. <laughs> so, um, I'll explain more about these later because my publisher gave me heck for not explaining what they were and what, who publishes them and all that good stuff. Um, so after the cheesy grin, I thought I would start with the call of the great Canadian wild, which goes like this: So as you probably know, that was from the famous duo of Bob and Doug Mackenzie. So like as a goonie, they're like my my uncles, eh? They're they're like down east, and and uh, so so most of you uh, don't know this, but uh, I actually uh, I actually grew up. Um, a couple blocks from from where they were filming those studios in Edmonton, and for the for some of you that might be asking, well, where the hell is Edmonton? Um, in fact, most of you are probably asking, well, where the hell is Chilliwack? And um, these guys actually grew up in, in down eastern eastern Canada, Toronto. Um, and some of you may ask, where the hell is Toronto as well? Um, well, Toronto is. Uh, not actually next door to us, and neither is Edmonton. So uh, Canada's quite a big place, and I'll explain that in a minute. But um, I'll I'll, uh, I'll uh, show you. So, so people are kind of wondering, especially for the geographically challenged, like my English wife. She's going to kill me for this later. Um, where, uh, how, where's Canada? Well, Canada's a big place. So, so, so some of you that may not know, Canada. Chill out, everybody right here. Edmonton's right about there. Toronto's way down over here. Now, if you can see that. Um, are you wondering how big it really is? Well, bigger than Japan. It's way bigger than the Philippines. It's even bigger than Taiwan. Lots of people there. See that? Taiwan. And chuck all those three together, in fact. Chuck in even, ah, pick Mexico. Throw in Mexico as well. Canada, way, way bigger. Huge place. Um, so there you go. Oh, she's going to kill me for that. I hope I didn't wreck it. Um, okay, so um, ba so ba back to the book. Um, these, so this is my first novel in the series. This is actually book three, um, Thunderbird's Wake. Uh, book two is being re-edited right now and re resubmitted for publication um, to the series. It's all about BC and, and the native coast. And uh, and some of you might be thinking, well, like take off, eh? Like, what do what do you mean, BC and the West Coast don't even know where that is, eh? Um, well, that that's actually on on the West Coast of of Canada. Um, and I'll uh, I'll explain more to Bob and Doug later. Um, anyway, so so this novel, now that my publisher hasn't uh, finished yelling at me, uh, is by Books We Love Limited, uh, ebook publisher and print book publisher um, worldwide. Um, you can, it's available on Amazon as well, if you're quite interested. So this scene now, um, actually I'll explain the book better. So this whole book is about, um, based on a true legend that the native sat on the west coast about a rare golden spruce tree that was cut down, believe it or not, in protest of logging about 30 years ago. So that actually happened, and, and the natives up there believe that, that there was a prince trapped inside the tree. And, and leaves it turn gold and sorrow, sorrow for this prince trapped in the tree. Um, so that that's true, and, and all those are all are their true legends. However, so what happens in the course of the book then is this guy, um, a white guy, goes out, you know, again protest logging, cuts the tree down. During the course of the, he releases the prince, who during the course of the book is evolving into an earth spirit. Um, he also releases the reason the prince is trapped there in the first place. Man, I'm gonna have to read faster because it's starting to rain. Great Canadian winter we have here. Um, so uh, he releases Raven. Raven wakes up, looks at the world the way it is today, doesn't like it one bit, and uh, he's out to try to change it back to the way it was. So uh, a white guy's reporter goes to investigate the story, meets a native girl, they fall in love with each, with each other. So there's a romance that runs through this as well. Um, the two of them with her uncle, who's a shaman, end up battling Raven to stop him from changing the world back to the way it was. Okay, so that's the scene. So the scene I'm going to read you is is a sh is, is going to be short because it's it's raining and I'm getting wet. Um, is from when Brooke, the main male character, the reporter, meets Shaylin, the the female 
uh, native woman that works in the, in the museum there on on the islands of of Haida Gwaii. Um, so he's just met her. He's he's just walked out uh, of it, and he's he, he, he's sitting in his car. Brooke climbed into the blazer, a Chevy blazer, and threw his head back. What the hell just happened back there? He grabbed his lap laptop and began to type feverishly. He could never understand the concept of love at first sight, nor the kind of love classic literature seems so full of soulmates, life bonding. Um, how could anything like that possibly exist in this digital age? Shivering romance, well, it died in the last century. He had written once. Well, maybe it had. Um, but maybe the notion of eternal soulmates really did exist. Um, he stared at the words he just typed into his laptop. Levels of awareness come in unexpected times. Sometimes. In the unexpectedness, we, everything we value as precious washes away and, in, and the present takes on a whole new meaning, grounding you from the trappings of your mind, pulling you away from, from everyday things. I've come here looking for answers and found only more questions. Why here? Why so far removed? from the heart of civilization as I know it. But that's part of it, isn't it? Um, to pull yourself from daily routine and place yourself on the edge of the unknown to contemplate. That's where the learning comes from. It happened last time I was here, and it's happening again. In totally un unforeseen ways. I'm excited, yet scared. The remoteness, allowing hinges rusted with civility to be flung open to portals of sensibility. Brooke was about to press save on his computer and hesitated, adding, It was like the first time I saw her. It was a set like the second time I loved her. He pressed save, closed the journal entry, and shut the lid to his computer. Shakespearean passions, that's what she'd woken in him. Damning emotions that drove men mad and women to swoon. Jesus. She did that to him in a smile, ten minutes at a handshake. What would a week alone with her produce? So that's that scene. Um, and the, um, so, uh, you're probably wondering, writing tip, I always promise to throw in a writing tip. Well, my best, a best answer for writers is simply to, um, it's called subconscious writing, that's what you have to establish. Um, I took, I took a creative writing course back in high school, which, yes, is, for many of you, decades ago, um, anyways, so in the course, um, and I, <laughs> I took it because I thought it'd be easy, um, but, um, so the opening day of the class, teacher hands us this, this notebook, uh, three-ring binder notebook, and uh, he says, this is your class uh, text for, for the class. And I open it, and I quickly said, yeah, but it's empty. It's just line pages. And he said to me, yes, that's your job is to fill it. And I went, what? So what we did for half the class is uh, we'd have to sit down and just start writing. And the first couple weeks... I thought he was absolutely nuts because the only thing I could write about was, you know, like the blonde girl in front of me, what color the walls were, you know, whether some of the shoes were untied. But I soon got what he was after um, because what happened very quickly after that was I start, we, I just started writing, and um, before I knew it, um, you know, the end by the end of the class, I was writing three, four, five, six pages, just sitting down, just, just, just going at it. Um, so the whole idea is to try to establish subconscious writing. Um, if you can start writing just from your mind, and, and it just flows like a circle, if you just get in this rhythm. And sometimes now I can sit down and write a whole short story at one time, a whole scene. Um, it, it's it's just trying to get all that going when, when you're when you're uh, getting in, getting into flow. So flow is important. Um, don't edit it. Don't do nothing. Just write. Um, you can do all that stuff later, because that's a whole other wrap of of expression, not to do with with creative writing. And uh, I think I'm gonna cut this short now, because I'm starting to get wet and cold. And uh, thank God the birds aren't around this time, which is kind of cool. Um, so off we go. Thank you very much, and we'll see you next time. Man, where did I? Do? Oh, I hope I didn't break that globe. Man, I paid a buck ninety-five for that sucker in in, in Salvation Army. Um, not to mention my books are wet. Oh, I'm freezing. There we go.